I'm about to read you a, a press release uh, from the sheriff of Kootenai County. Now, I'm not going to tell you where Kootenai County is because there might be Californians listening to this episode. But nevertheless, I'm sure those of you who are motivated can find out where it is. In any event, just for context, uh, this letter is a, um, this is a public uh, release. It, it is the position of the incoming sheriff of Kootenai County to the people in his, um, in his area of responsibility in the county. And I'm just going to read it verbatim. Because to me, this is what a free country sounds like. I make this commitment to you, the citizens of Kootenai County. Just right there. I personally, me, as an individual person, make a commitment to you. I am making a contract with you. I'm making a promise to you. And I'm making a promise not to the people who elected me, not to the Republicans or the Democrats, not to the whatever special, no, to the, to the citizens of the county that the sheriff is responsible for. The Kootenai County Sheriff Office will not enforce an unenforceable law or executive mandate on its citizens. This entire government by executive order, which in California is exactly how everything is done, the, anytime you hear either the president or a governor has issued an executive order, then you know that you're dealing with a, a system that is broken, not just, not just in in need of repair or badly damaged, it's broken. And that applies to whoever is issuing the executive order. Executive orders are dictatorship. An, ecu an executive order is a decree. And we don't, our government is not based upon issuance of a decree, even if that person is elected. It's not based upon the person issuing a decree. So he says, I'm not going to enforce an unenforceable law or an executive order. That alone shows respect for the entire system of government. I'm just gonna leave these on. It is not law enforcement's job to get between you, your health, and your doctor, period. Imagine that. Imagine a person who, who believes that law enforcement's job is to enforce the law. In other words, a person who has tremendous authority basically saying, I understand what the limits of my authority are, and I'm not going to exceed them. This is a promise that I've made to you, a commitment. Enforcing criminal sanctions on otherwise law-abiding people goes against the fundamental principles of the U.S. and Idaho constitutions. Robert Norris has actually read the Constitution of the United States and, and the Constitution of Idaho. What a remarkable statement that is. He goes on, it should be pointed out that there is no provision in our Constitution that suspends people's rights during a declared emergency. I'm going to take the glasses off for this one because this one is really the essence of it. When the COVID lockdown occurred in California, and when the entire COVID uh, outbreak happened in the nation, we were told two weeks to flatten the curve. And that seemed like a sensible thing to me. It seemed like a good thing to do in order to protect the lives of Americans. That's where we were at the time. And it was certainly a sacrifice that I was willing to make. And the entire idea was if we do this for two weeks, our hospitals will not become so overloaded that people who might have otherwise survived would have died because of overcrowded facilities and people in traffic accidents and all the rest. And then it became clear that, no, this is, this is emergency powers and we can do anything we want to. And what we found in California was that the first thing that you, that you have to understand about emergency powers is that here in California, there is no limit on the time of the emergency powers, the time that they're in, a, in effect, and there's no limit to the amount of power that is given to the governor or whoever in this case. For this guy to say, uh, forgive me for calling him a guy, for this American patriot to say that the, uh, the announcement of a state of emergency does not abolish your rights is precisely the kind of understanding about, not just about law enforcement, about our, our entire idea of government and self-governance. It's my opinion that the facts are becoming clear with COVID-19. The facts are becoming clear. Isn't that interesting too? Not the opinions, not the forecasts, not the predictions, not the, uh, the, the worries or the fear, the facts. The facts. What's happening in hospitals? What is actually happening among the people who get infected with COVID-19 in my county? Are they dying like flies? Because if they are, then I'm going to have a different recommendation on this, but I'd still bet you that Robert Norris would never sanction the abandonment of our rights. I just think he'd probably be a little more aggressive about making the point. But basically he says the facts are, Certain risk groups should take extra precautions, but the vast majority of healthy people who contract COVID-19 will experience flu symptoms and recover from the virus. He says that's a fact because it's a fact. And the idea of having a fact 
determine your policy rather than have your policy select the facts, that's old school music. Reminds me of a free country. It's the sound of a free country. We trust citizens. There it is again. What? The left must look at this and just and just shake their heads. We trust citizens. It could be just we trust citizens, period. That could be the entire memo. We trust citizens to assess their own risk and take the necessary precautions based on their own risk factors. It is the common universal position of, of left-wingers, especially here in California, I'm sure it's true around the country and around the world, that we're not qualified to know what the risk of this is. How can we possibly know how dangerous this is? This is a job for scientists. This is a job for Fau Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci will tell us when it's safe to go back to our own lives. Assuming that Dr. Fauci was right in everything, and it's pretty clear that's not the case, Dr. Fauci, as I've said many times before, to put the very best light on this guy, is concerned with minimizing the number of deaths, but that, due to this particular outbreak, takes, take Dr. Fauci out of it. Put your favorite, put Dr. Kildare in there. A doctor's job is to, especially a doctor advising on government policy and health and public health, their job is to make it clear what the public health risk is and to recommend cases that will minimize the total amount of people who, who become seriously ill or die. That's their job. But that's not the entire equation. That's not the entire equation. There are many, many other things in the equation that have to be factored in. A responsible government, a, a, go a government of the people, a government that, in the words of this remarkable gentleman, trusts its citizens, would basically present the facts in an unbiased fashion and say that this is the conclusion that we come to and this is the recommendation that we make based on that conclusion. But that's not what we've seen at all. We haven't seen anything remotely like that. Sheriff Norris believes that adults are able to best determine what is in their own interest regarding their lives and their own health than he is, or the governor is, or the president is. He believes that if you have sick people at home, elderly people, people at risk, you're going to take extra precautions because you're an adult. And if you don't have any of those factors, he's not going to force you to take pre uh, precautions that you don't need. That is the essence of self-government. That's the essence of it. That is the entire turning point of democracy and a republic, is that the citizens are capable of governing themselves. And they don't need to be told what to do, and they don't have to be told what to do. And that's why this letter is, to me, the sound of a free country. Um, let's go back, uh, look at it again. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office role in our community is not to count how many people are in your home or how a private business conducts itself to make a living for the business or its employees. Yeah, that's what it says, all right. Our role is not to tell you how to live your life, count the people in your house, or tell you how to run our business. That's not the job of the Sheriff's Department. A job doesn't belong to anybody, but what he's saying is it's certainly not our job. And then this one is as clear as, as the morning sun. There's no, there's no ornamentation on this one. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office will never interfere with religious gatherings. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office will never interfere with religious gatherings, period. In other words, what this man is saying, at least is certainly what seems to be saying, is even if this was a very deadly virus like yellow fever or scarlet fever or bubonic plague or Ebola, if people of a congregation willingly decide that they want to go and gather together and, and deal with this from a position of mutual spiritual strength from each other, then he's not going to stop them because that is a decision that they made on their own as adults and he is not going to tell them you cannot have a religious ceremony because you're too stupid to understand what is going to happen to you if you do. This is, I, I know I'm, I know I just keep coming back to the same point, but again, that's why it's called, this, this is the sound of a free country. This is what freedom sounds like. This is not only what freedom sounds like, this is what responsibility sounds like, inherent in that single declarative sentence by Sheriff Norris, is the understanding that since we are not going to interfere in any religious authorities whatsoever, the law enforcement and the state is not going to stop you from going to church, no matter what the situation with the virus is, that statement includes in it 
the understanding that therefore you are responsible for what happens to yourself and you're also responsible for whoever you might happen to share that disease with if you happen to pick it up at a religious gathering. This is, the, this is what government sounds like that trusts the people. And furthermore, this is what government sounds like that trusts the people and trusts that the people are good people. This is the sound of somebody who, who, is the, who is the sheriff of a county comprised mostly of people who not only understand what to do, but will also do the right thing. In other words, if they go down to church and they find themselves getting sick, then they're not going to simply walk around and infect everybody they know. They're, if the people have enough, a, enough responsibility to take responsibility for their lives, they're going to take responsibility for other people's lives too. What a remarkable statement. What a remarkable guy. I and all the members of KCSO salute and will support the dedicated medical professionals who are on the front lines caring for those who have become seriously ill during the pandemic. Why is that there? Well, sometimes when something is pretty near perfect, you realize that there's not a note missing and there's not a note extra. What he's saying in that sentence is, we salute the medical responders. And what he's saying there basically is, oh no, this is not a fictional disease. This is not some kind of invented thing. This is real. And we salute the people who are putting their lives at risk in order to treat the people who are suffering from this. This is an acknowledgement that this is a real issue. And, and it's a sign of gratitude and respect from law enforcement to the people who have put themselves on the line and continue to put themselves on the line with infectious diseases by working with people who are sick, period. Here's the finding, uh, final paragraph. My job as sheriff is first and foremost to secure and protect the safety and rights of our citizens. <sighs> Virtually anybody else, certainly anybody in the modern age, any modern sheriff, or, or if I'd heard any kind of a statement like this from LA County PD or some LAPD or even LA County Sheriff's Department, what that statement would have said is, it is our responsibility to protect the safety of our citizens. That's not what he said. He said it is the responsibility of our sheriff's office to, to protect the safety and the rights of our citizens. And that is a big difference. Because what he's basically saying is, we are not going to sacrifice the reasons that we live in order to protect us from possible reasons that we might die. The men and women of the KCSO will continue to keep the peace. There's another radical concept in the town I live in. We're going to keep the peace. We're not going to tell you what to do, where to go. We're not going to come into your businesses. We're not going to fine you for not obeying the laws from some god king emperor or something. Our job is to keep the peace. Our job is to let everybody do whatever they want to do, go where they want to go, be their own free citizens and live their own lives so long as they don't disturb the peace by hurting somebody or taking some of their stuff. We continue to keep the peace and foster a strong and vibrant relationship within the community. Sheriff Robert B. Norris. Uh, Sheriff Norris, since the person has sent this to me, uh, has a reasonable chance of actually getting this entire video back to you. Let me just say something uh, for myself, and I know I'm speaking, this is a, a not the kind of statement I normally make, but in this particular case, I'm sure I'm speaking for 100 million Americans, at least when I say this. Your understanding of your role in law enforcement, and much more importantly, your 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 fundamental moral and philosophical understanding of what free people are and government of the free people by the free people is, is astonishing in any age and under any circumstances. It is simply, without question, a textbook perfect response to how people who have been entrusted with power by the people that have assigned them to an office, how those officials should respond to the people who put them there. Not just in law enforcement, but in any capacity whatsoever. This letter as written is the most perfect example of the kind of response that a public servant of any kind should have towards the people that sent them there. You have the undying respect of me and anybody else who hears this lesson. And I promise you, I promise you as a personal promise from me to you that I am going to do everything in my power to make sure that Californians do not get this message and that they do not come up there and ruin this incredible last bastion of America that exists not just in your, um, in your county, but in counties all across the country. This is why we fight. This is why we have a country to fight for. And, and when you are finished with your term as sheriff, 
if you should decide to run for higher office, um, governor or senator or president, it would be my personal pleasure to do whatever I possibly can to aid you in that regard, even if that means never mentioning your name again.